Welcome to the Influent Podcast, developing leadership, building success, and influencing society. For more resources, visit us online at influent.life. Hi, welcome back to Influent Live, our second show for 2018. And uh, so last time we had a great, a great show uh, talking about being influencers and and using your work as a platform for uh, for God to to shine forth through you, and how that matters, how we can be influencers. This time, we're going to be talking about a discovery of hope and and a discovery of of this way we are to be living as Christians. I believe the only way we're we're to live as Christians and this discovery of hope. And hope is different. The word hope, the biblical word hope, is different than than the English word hope. In, the, in English, the word hope is, uh, is really about kind of wishful thinking. It's like, oh, I kind of hope good things happen to me someday. But, but true biblical hope is confidence, confidence in God, confidence in his promises, confidence that he's good, confidence that he's working in your life, confidence in everything he says. And, um, and I've just found, uh, you know, it's it's the anchor. It's it's so important for us. And uh, so we're going to be talking, you know, got a little ahead of myself there. <laughs> we're going to be talking about hope today. So let me inter- introduce to you our our uh, our guests today. So we have we have Kelly, who is our co-host for for our shows this year, and Kelly is a former um, model and former Miss Canada, so which is a big deal. And you're going to be sharing more of your story as we go on. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Um, having run in the ministry movement and in marketplace, it's a real blessing to just continue to see God's passion alive in His people. And I just see the 30 years of the prayer movement that marketplace ministry is the legs of revival in our revival movement. So. We, I'm just excited to continue our chats about putting boots on the ground and doing the real yeah. exploits of ministry. Come on. Come on. And Amber McCool, so she's director of Influent, yeah. major pillar here, and longtime follower of Jesus, a major encounter with the Lord, and, um, and passionate about this message and passionate about God's people engaging the system and, and showing forth God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm excited to share just wisdom and my story of gaining confidence in the Lord and gaining confidence in the promises that he has spoken to me Uh and just my journey in that and it seems that it's just taking a hold of every day and the practical things and gaining confidence in those simple steps. Awesome and Will Riddle so like it like the joke and uh, and (laughs) will will actually uh is a is a a friend we go to church together and will is the director of uh field operations for uh, chuck colson's ministry prison fellowship and uh and you're kind of as you you describe you're kind of a bivocational guy you love you love the workplace but you love the ministry side and you just kind of kind of flow back and forth between the two. I am. You know, I've always had my hands in a lot of different things. It's hard to really even describe the stuff the Lord's had me in. But, but yeah, you know, I, I spent 16 years at IBM before I was uh, in prison fellowship. And, and um, you know, just there's so much. You know, one of the things you talk about in Which side of the bars were you on? <laughs> Which side of the bars? <laughs> <Sorry>. uh, <laughs> there's <laughs> right. Cheesy jokes. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, I'm on the outside oh my now. God. <laughs> but but uh, you know, there's so much, so <laughs> much that God does in you. I mean, that's the part that really tr- you know, struck yeah. me in your marketplace book. So much that God does in you in marketplace, and when you get into ministry environments, a lot of time you just you can see the fact that people haven't been there because the training is missing. You know. Yeah. So yeah, I've got a huge heart for this, and that's really glad awesome. to be here with you. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So Bob, back to you. As we launch 2018, uh, we want to cast a vision of what Influent and being a hope reformer is all about. So you wrote this book called Kingdom Horizon. That's a good looking book. Hey. <laughs> so eight reasons why the Earth's greatest days are unfolding. So you're changing the paradigm that, uh, you know, from kind of the glass is half empty to it's it's full yeah. and it's full of light and hope. So, 
Um, why don't you dive in and kind of tell us more about what that's all about? Yeah. Well, it's uh, it really represents. I wrote that about a year ago. Released it released a, a year ago, and it was really a. Um, it's been a paradigm shift for me. Uh, this discovery of hope and this this confidence in the goodness of God in all of life and confidence that we have a good future. You know, the earth has a good future and that we have a good future. And it's it's it was really a radical change for me because you know for some some reason. Christians get in this mindset where we're kind of we're kind of on the losing end of history. We're on the losing end of society. We're on the losing end of everything. We're going to be the poor ones. We're going to be the not influential ones. We're going to be kind of we're just all all of our hope is in eternity alone. And I believe. I mean, we have eternal promises. No, no question. They're a big deal. But we also have temporal promises for this for this life and. So the book is really about just a shift in understanding that we have a, there is reason to hope in the planet, you know. Um, so you know, one of the things I, I did is I actually looked through uh, because I'm a I'm a data guy, I'm a computer scientist, and and I study data for fun. I know it's weird, but I do, and um, you know, so there's all this talk about kind of the, you know, this bad stuff going on. And then there's all this talk, I follow the futurists out there, you know, Peter Diamandis and all this stuff about everything's getting better. And I'm like, well, which is it, you know? <laughs> and um, are things getting better, are things getting worse? And so I decided I wanted to know and I didn't want anybody to tell me, right? I wanted to figure it out. So I actually studied every data point I could find uh, of real data that goes back 2,000 years or at least 1,000 years or, and so the book is full of charts and I chart it out and, and it's, you know, it's a stunning kind of revelation, you know, about about the the, the positive view of the planet and and uh, and a positive view of God's work in the planet that He is at work. It's working, you know. That reformers like Wilberforce and others, it they've it's mattered, and the earth has changed because of it. And you know, Florence Nightingale and John Locke and all these reformers. So it matters. What was one of your most eye-opening findings that you found in your research time? Yeah, you know, um, that's, there's, there was so many, uh, but just, you know, for instance, uh, you, know, I'm a, you know, I love liberty, and, you know, you realize just even 250 years ago, you know, the idea of you being free to choose your own vocation, to choose, to have property that couldn't be taken, you know, that was a radical idea, mm. property that couldn't be taken, and today, it's literally the main thing. You know, so 52% of, of the global population lives in a free society today versus 250 years ago is 12%, you know, based on objective analysis. And, um, and who's, who, is, who's, who is the author of that? Is Satan the author of liberty, you know? Jesus says, I come to set you free. Mm -hmm. He who sunsets free is free indeed. He's about liberty, and it's liberty for the gospel. It's liberty for us to do what we're called to do. So, you know, great question. But... Uh, you know, the, we have we have reason to hope. We have reason to believe that what we do matters in the earth, and reason to believe that it's going to have an impact. Yeah, and you know that whole idea of hopelessness. You know, that what we've talked about before, Bob, is how that can steal. It can actually steal your calling because you lose hope. Yeah. I think even in one of your books, you talk about you know people that lost companies because they got into a fear mindset that came from the church, came from theology, and then they made bad business decisions based on hopelessness. Right. It, you know, and so it's almost, it's in, this, it's in the atmosphere almost for us in, in the American church, and we have to kind of deprogram ourselves. And that's, I think, part of what happens as you go through the kingdom horizon journey, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Yeah. Sometimes <coughs> some church views or people who study different theologies can just see that the world is getting worse and worse and just hollow, just kind of hide away and not really feel that their life is making an impact, but the truth in that there's a hope-filled future and God, the ever-present living God, creator, with us and for us is making a stake in the ground every day, advancing his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Every day counts. Right. Every, every movement, every decision for your character um, impacts something um, yeah. on the other side. Mm -hmm. it, it is so important that we get in, into this confident view of God and confident view of our of our future, yeah. because it's really faith, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right. If, if we if we believe bad things are going to happen, guess what happens? 
happens, you know? What promises are we calling on if we're believing in bad things, you know? I mean, we have so many promises. All the promises of God are yes and amen in Jesus and in, in Christ. So he said, he said you, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens, strengthens you. He says nothing is impossible with God, right? And it's, it's the two spies versus the ten spies mentality, right? Twelve went out, two came back with a good report saying, we can do it. And the other guys were freaked out. They're like, they're big giants. It's scary. You know? And I love their response, you know? <laughs> they will be bread for us. You know? <laughs> the giants will be bread for us. It's like we need to see our challenges and the challenges in the earth as opportunities. Right. There is nothing that, that, that one man, one woman with God cannot do mm-hmm. in, in God. You look at Wilberforce. How much of the planet did he change? And William Wilberforce, you know, go see the movie Amazing Grace you know and, and he, he was part of a movement it wasn't just him but they changed the way the world saw slavery do you realize you know for for 6000 years of human history slavery was the norm slavery was legal in every country in the earth and it was normal think about that are you are you glad those days are gone you know and 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 because reformers came and actually influence society with godly values and godly ideas we live in a different society and now the whole world's mindset has changed mm-hmm. right we are influencers we are called we have better ideas mm-hmm. our ideas work and they're better yeah. and that human beings engaged in in godly activity change everything right do you really believe a, a human being filled with god won't change something you know, so so we, we have to shift our mindset and start to believe that that we can make a difference and that and get into this place of hope. Hope for your own personal life, hope for your marriage, hope for your kids, hope for your job, hope for your nation. Mm-hmm. You know, hope for your city. Yeah, I think of two words: authority and perspective. And going off what you said, when someone takes a hold and knows the authority that's within them that God's given them. Mm and sees the right perspective, how much of a difference that they can make. And I believe that that's a, one of the equations to be an influencer in the world and to make a difference on a daily basis and hold on to hope and hold on to that confidence within you. And because God's given us so much authority, you know, to make decisions and to be wise and to operate in the giftings and operate in who he's called us to be. and. I think that's just powerful once we realize the authority that's within us and that God is in us to to do yeah. these things. Yeah, you know, and I, I love that point, Amber, because you know, um, you know, over the journey in the past ten years or so, my wife's been kind of on the same journey that Bob's on, and and um, I think that part of what happens to us is that we start watching the news and we see all these negative things. We you know, kind of we begin to believe in this downward spiral, and mm-hmm. you know, what the Lord dropped into my heart a few years ago was. Don't read the news. Make the news. Ooh. It, you know, and and then actually we started doing that. You know, my my wife actually wrote a textbook. We got on the news. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> and and, uh, and you know that's what God wants. It's yeah. like if the news is bad, it's because we're not doing our job. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. if we tune that news out, we be, can begin to become the news. You know. Yeah. Well, the reality is, the news is is skewed, right? You know, it, it's you know when I show when I show the charts. Of in the book, people normally are in disbelief. They're like, "No, that can't be be true." And it is true. Okay, do you know crime rates in the United States are actually dropping? Do you know? Do you know anybody want to guess? Just in the Wall Street Journal this morning, how many how many deaths, airplane deaths from from a flight, airplane flights, like commercial flights, last year? Zero. Zero. Mm. Zero. Didn't make the news. I guess it did make the news. The way to all the Wall Street <laughs> Journal. But but the the point is what happens. Yeah. Humans respond to fear. They they take action. Right. If you're if if you're afraid, you take action. If you're not afraid, you don't always take action. That's human nature. It's the way we're wired. So the news program, the news. That's the way they get engagement. It's the way, that's why negative books sell horrible horrible books. Sell well. They sell better. You know, I think about the blood moons, you know? Yeah. You know, how many of you survived the blood moons? 
You know, <laughs> Y2K, do I survive Y2K? You know, I made it. Still I here. made it through <laughs> Y2K, I know. But these oh books gosh. generated yeah. incredible amounts of fear, yeah. incredible amounts of energy, you know, not, 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 not the, the God moons, you know. Where's the God moon? I live under a God moon every day, you know, and, uh, you know, didn't make the news. And so there's, there's just this wiring for the negative. And we've got to realize that we're just, we're being deceived by looking at those things negatively, that we there is a, another story. There's always another story, and it's not necessarily the one you're reading or hearing about, you know. And so that that's where you know the book. I just I encourage you to get the book and get look at some of these look some of these charts. It is another. It's a different narrative and a different story. Mm-hmm. I know when I was reading your book Kingdom Horizon, I was stumped by most of the data research that you found because. Most my journey of seeing research and looking up data for myself, I, I didn't discover what you did. And so it was really eye-opening to me to see there, there was hope in the world with all this fear-based yeah. theology and stuff. So it was really interesting to me. Yeah. And the point I want to make really is that as reformers, we can make a difference. That it matters that uh, you go into the cube and shine in the light in your workplace. That matters Mm -hmm. as well as you bringing God's value system in. You know, I want to, we want to change this idea. You know, I I define the kingdom of God differently than a lot of people define it in the book. And to define the kingdom of God is not, is when the power of God impacts the earth, which is one of the ways, of course, we know. But it's also when the ways or the value systems of God impact the earth. So when, when slavery is eradicated, right, or becomes illegal in every nation, that's God's value system, right? When, when, when a greedy man, Zacchaeus, gives half of his wealth away, that's the kingdom of God. It's the ways of God, right? And so as we see the ways of God taking, uh, taking root, we can say that's the kingdom of God is expanding. Even this desire for justice that's across, I see so much, there's this cry for justice for this, justice that. You know, I believe the Lord has put a justice chip in people. You know, and yeah, it's being misplayed. Yes, but it's still his chip that he's put in people. There's a desire for justice and liberty and freedom. There's a desire for, a desire for equality. There's a desire for these things that God has put in there. So we need to not look at those as, as just negative things. You know. Absolutely. And it starts with our lens of God that He's in a good mood and that He's fighting That's for right. us. He's our champion. That's right. He's got a smile. He's not the condemning father who is no. looking over our shoulder, but he's the life coach who's cheering us on and that when yeah. we stumble, he's picking us up. And that's his view of humanity. His view is so different than what we would perceive him as just that, the that is angry so dad. So let's anchor ourselves in that reality. And so anchored in that, there's this mm-hmm. overflow that just naturally That's comes right. out of an abundance of Come the on. happy God. That's right. It is so, your paradigm makes so much difference. Yeah. You know, the Bible talks about, you know, if death reigned through that one man, Adam, how much more will life reign, reign as kings? How much will we reign as kings through Christ? You know, and so the Lord has put us here to reign. He's put us here to influence the, the world. And, you know, the, it's like there's so many scriptures that we, we kind of overlook, right? Yeah. Like the increase of his government shall know no end. Mm. It, you know, didn't say like the government will increase and there'll be a lot of really bad stuff, then an antichrist, and then there'll be some good stuff. <laughs> it says the increase will know no end. And so and it, it, that's not saying his government won't end. It's saying the increase of his government, meaning his rule and reign, will never end. The increase will be constant, continuous. And actually, actually point that out in the book. I show the charts where this is happening. You know, or another, another one of my favorite ones is it, it promises that he'll starve all the gods of the earth. <laughs> you know, it's this is awesome scripture. You think about like, how many, when was the last time you met a Thor worshiper? <laughs> or, you know, they aren't any. There's that <laughs> Thor's been starved of worshippers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> poor and so, Thor. <laughs> yeah. And so, as as we as we transform society, what's going on is that the you know the demonic spirits, the gods of the earth, so called, are being starved of worshippers, and the true gospel is going out. And that's more than just a message. It's more than just a fire insurance card. Yeah. It's the transformation of society. Yeah, you know, you you hit on kings and queens, but that's one of the points I make in the book. Okay, what if we really are going to rule and reign with him? Mm-hmm. What if you, we really are going to be kings and queens? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. What if that's true? 
Okay, what if you had a daughter who was going to be queen or a son who was going to be king? Right, for real. Would you train them? Absolutely. And what would what kind of stuff would you want them to know? All the stuff. Right? <laughs> Every, I mean, you, would you want them to be humble? Mm. Would you want them to be wise? To make wise decisions? Peaceful. Yeah, sure. Would, would you want them to be able to, to even understand people and leadership? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Wow. Would you want them to be able to look at even the numbers and know if the kingdom's prospering or not? Yes? Yeah. Yeah. You want all these things. And, my, and, and one of the points I make in the book is that the earth is our training ground for these things to train us to be kings and queens. We are all kings and queens in training, right? All of us. And so he, he gives us these terrible, horrible challenges in the earth that it's like living in a room full of barbells, you know, mm -hmm. dumbbells, you know, to make us wise, to make us, mm -hmm. to make us skilled and, and understand people and, and being able to solve problems and be and these things he's he's training us for reigning and the earth this is our this is our training ground you want me to prove it to you yes <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> luke 19 the yeah. parable of the minas said he entrusted he mm -hmm. trusted you know minas you know one two and five to these guys and the ones who were faithful what did they get as a reward luke 19 what five cities. Get? Five cities and two cities and no cities. What? They got cities? Well, and I think, Bob, you're hitting on something really important there, which is that part of what's come with this sort of hyper-fear about the end of the world is this misreading of the entire scripture as if it's all future. So we've all read that parable and we think, oh, yeah, eventually, you know, when I die, the Lord might give me some cities or no cities if I evangelized a lot. Mm. But actually, yeah. you know, the, Jesus says the kingdom is here. It's now. Mm -hmm. And so the be that process begins here on the earth. If you're faithful with yeah. a little, you'll be given a little bit more and a little bit more yeah. and a little bit more. Yeah, even, even Matthew 13, the parable of the wheat and the tares. So it says the wheat is the, is the field. The seed, the seed is, is the gospel. And, and, or the, and, and the wheat is, is the sons of the kingdom. It's the sons of the kingdom. So the harvest is not a harvest of babies. It's a harvest of sons and daughters. Full-on sons and daughters. It's a harvest of kings and queens. Right, which, is, which it says... What if, yeah, what if the whole point of the earth is him to harvest kings and queens to rule and reign with him? What if that's the point? Who advance. Who advance, who are, who are fit to rule with him. That's, that's what I believe, 100%. Which it says the earth is, is waiting, right? It's groaning for the revealing. That's, that's exactly yeah. right. For the revealing and, of the sons and, of God. And so this is, this is why this ties into the whole marketplace message. I believe the marketplace is the best training ground. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're called to the ministry, go for it and, get, you know, get it on. But, if you, but, you know, the marketplace, it's the place you learn leadership. It's the place you learn wisdom, the place you learn mm -hmm. these things. You, you expand. I, I just think about so many I know. I think about my daughter and my wife. I've seen become amazing, amazing godly leaders by their marketplace exploits, if you will. I mean, they're just, mm -hmm. they're, the stature that they have is just amazing. And, you know, and it's, it's, a, it's a wasted opportunity for so many people where they don't engage the system yeah. they don't engage the system mm -hmm. you know which is the training for reigning i think always think of the life coach you know when you work out a muscle kind of has to break down but it's in order to build it yeah. back up and strengthen mm -hmm. it so as we see the challenges in the marketplace the challenges in front of us the trials are actually a gift in disguise if this is the hope filled view That's that right. will actually empower us to be ones who can carry out the virtues of God as we're faithful um, to rule and reign with him. Yeah. It is so important that we that we that we use these opportunities. In fact, I was just reading a book and it was an amazing book. Uh, and it was got by a guy named uh, Sean Acor and it's called uh, The Happiness Advantage and he's a he's a Harvard uh, um, uh, psychologist and he's all these studies about about how a positive view of life 
uh, actually trans it changes your entire future. It, you have higher sales. You actually live ten years longer. It's amazing the stuff the stuff that that happens. And and exactly this this point what what you just said. You know that it we have a uh, massive amount of 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 you know impact. And it's all just it's scripture that this guy figured out. Mm -hmm. You know the scientists figured out, and it's got all these studies and stuff to prove. But but one of them is just this idea that. This, you know, this what he calls the locus of control, believing that you can make a difference, that you can make an impact. You know, those that believe that they can make an impact actually are far happier, and they make far more impact. Just, just believing that alone, and uh, you know, so it is, it is really important. And and I would say, I mean, Amber, wouldn't you say that this is a big part of what influence is really all about? It's giving people hope for for transformation in the marketplace and all that. Absolutely. We really want to be a resource and a tool and a community for people to take a hold of that confidence in the marketplace and show them that it's possible. And even our, our heart behind the talk show is to be bring in people like yourself that you have testimony to share of what God is doing in your life and through you to others around you. and. I'm just excited for what God's already mm -hmm. done and the people that He's He's brought mm -hmm. in connection with us, and for more people to to be encouraged mm -hmm. and to build that confidence with the yeah. Lord and within themselves in the market and become kings and queens. Yes, yeah. to engage whatever your system is, engage the system, become kings and queens. Mm -hmm. But but here's here's the other point that just burns in me. I I, I think about how much impact we can have on the planet, on God's planet, how much difference we, we, we can make, you know? And so, you know, I'll, I'll tell a little dream I had, and I've not shared this publicly, but I'll, I'm going to share it. I have the, all these crazy dreams, you know, and I'm not even saying this is, this is God or anything, but, you know, hey, maybe it is, you know, I don't know. But, but, uh, but um, the, the dream, I was really bothered about the secularization of society. Right, and we're all aware that there's a there's a there's a there's a strength in secularism, right, growing. And in the dream, the Lord was talking to me, and he, and he said, "Well, you know, you know, the, the the secularism is is due to the false paradigms mm -hmm. in the church." I'm like, "What?" Mm -hmm. And he actually pointed out this book called "The Late Great Planet Earth," which was this doomsday end times book in the 70s, literally the number one best selling book of the 19 the decade of the 1970s, number one. Of all time, of the decade, okay, and and he and he and he said, he said that's influenced the secularization of society. I'm going, what? What do you mean? I'm in the dream. I'm just like, and and he said, yes, the young people were were touched by this message, and 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 but he said what happened in the '60s and the '70s, young people were touched at universities. And he th I thought about the Jesus movement or the you know the whole hippie movement and all this stuff, and he said so many decided to stay in academia. And I'm thinking about all the professors I know that are all ex-hippies, you know, anybody at universities, you know, that's 20 so years old. They they're them. all ex-hippies. Yeah. And, and he said, except the Christians mm. who read this book and got touched by the Jesus movement and left the university system. Mm. And if you run off the battlefield, the other side wins, right? That's it. They ran off the battlefield. And God's best, God's best warriors, the mighty ones, left and and I'm realizing, oh my gosh, the reason. And, and then then he showed me that in the dream he said, and I saw that the university system was the main influencer of society. That the CEOs get trained there, the the, the media elites get trained there, right? The journalists, the the Hollywood, everyone gets trained. And imagine, but then I st but then the, here's the hope field view, right? Here's here's what happened. Was the Lord wasn't in the dream? Wasn't that worried about it? It was like, yeah, it's a bad wave. You know, but that ain't the last wave. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and I saw all we had to do was graduate 250,000 university professors who were Christians. And they didn't have to be smarter than anybody, although they would be. They didn't have to go to war with anybody. They just, they just had to be. They just had to be. Imagine, imagine if 25% of your university professors were just believers. Would that have changed your university experience? They didn't have to be loud mouths. They didn't have to, you follow me? Bible bangers, mm -hmm. and I real I realize that that all we got to do is 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 just be. We have to just infect society, right? He's, he Jesus said Jesus said 
The kingdom of God is like a lump of leaven that a woman hid in a pack of dough, a measure of dough, until it was all leavened. And so all we got to do is just be leavened. We just got to stick ourselves in the dough. And, and Christians, if we, if we do that, we win, and the earth wins. And so I'm so passionate that Jesus gets the reward of everything that, that, he, that he has and everything he's sown, and that we get, the, we get the, the reward of having partnered with him to do this, to change his earth and bring his kingdom on the planet. And so all we got to do is get back and engage our system. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, and God and God is with you know He's with those that do that. And I think the Wilberforce story is such a good example of that. And you know, I just think you know, just back to the beginning of everything you said that you know that we've lost the vision, and so therefore people have have left. And you know, I just think we you know we should just really pray over the over everyone that's listening because it's really I th- I believe that God has brought together this group to to reignite that vision into the earth and people are going to be drawn and catch fire with that. Mm. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just, uh, Lord, we just thank you um, for for what you're doing, uh, Father, through uh, this movement, Lord, and just in the hearts of everyone listening. And we just ask that you would release a whole wave of hope into their hearts, Lord God, that they would realize that they, too, can be change agents in the earth. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, so <laughs> let's be hope bringers. Let's be the two spies. Let's be overcomers and believe that God is, a, is we are overcomers in God, and God can overcome all of our circumstances and situations. All right, so we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. God bless. <laughs>